In this lesson, we'll be talking about the Newton's law of cooling. So we're gonna define a model of Newton's law of cooling. So in your chemistry course, you spoke, you might have done entropy and end out. And you spoke about heat. So in principle, heat always flows from a hot object to a colder one. So this is how heat flows, right? So let's say I bake bread and I remove from, from an oven. So let's say I've got my surroundings, which is the room in this case, and I've got a table where I'm going to put my bread after baking it. Suppose the surrounding is at a room temperature of roughly 25 degrees and the bread is hot, right? So let's say the bread is at a temperature of about 40 degrees just for illustration. How will heat flow? Well, the temperature of the system, which is your bread in this case, is more than the temperature of the surroundings. So where will the heat flow? Heat will flow from the bread to the surroundings because heat always flows from hot to cold spontaneously, meaning you mustn't add any energy to it for it to happen. It happens on its own, right? So that also backs up the second law of thermodynamics. That the entropy of the universe must increase for any process which is, which is happening spontaneously. So Newton's law of cooling is based on the principle of heat transfer. So now, let's look at the Malthusian model which we had. Even though Newton's law of cooling and the Malthusian model are two different things, right? But let's see how this model looks like. So we can model Newton's law of cooling from this one. So we said that dp dt which is equal to kt right okay let's say kp multiplied by m minus p right so this was the logistic now let's remove this p and write this well this was the multiple model that includes limited growth because of a carrying capacity right so now here this was the maximum number which the the equation can go to right so now this was the population at a time t and this quantity here depended on t or depends on t right well in terms law of cooling is a similar model as well in such a way that we say that the t in this case we're using capital t for the temperature of the object in this case, the temperature of the bread divided by dt is equal to what? It's equal to negative k. Now we're using k because the temperature decreases, okay, according to convection, according to the principle of heat transfer. Multiplied by what? Since I'm now putting a, a negative on this outside, this order here, I'm going to write it as t minus ts. Or if you wanted to, you will say dt, dt is equal to, if I put the coefficient of k as positive, then I must the order inside as ts minus t. So for your course, you don't have to know um, how we end up getting to this model over here, right? But this is the Newton's law of cooling. And the one which you are going to use is going to be this one with a negative k, because it makes more sense because the k, the coefficient of k is negative because the temperature it decreases as time increases. Okay, time never goes in reverse. Now let's say dt, dt equals to negative k multiplied by t minus ts. Well, important, k is a positive number. k is always, it's always a positive number. It's a proportionality constant. It's a positive number. However, its coefficient is negative. It doesn't mean that k is negative. k is positive, but then its coefficient is negative. Just to show the inverse relationship between the change in temperature of the object with respect to this difference over here. So now, 
we are going to integrate this model. Okay. Now, if you can check, let's define constants in this constants and variables. Okay, it's a constant. Ts is a constant. The temperature of the surroundings. Now, if you look at the surroundings, which is 75 degrees, if bread were to were to cool down, we are saying that heat must flow from the bread to the surroundings, right? But the surroundings is too large that it is assumed to be in equilibrium. The temperature does not significantly change. So now what we are saying here that even though your bread is cooling down, it does not significantly heat up the surroundings. So we can assume that this TS ambient temperature is nearly constant. Okay, which will be given to you in, in scenarios which you have to solve. But T changes. So this T is a function of time. Okay, so now we're going to apply a variable separation. We know that this is a constant number. So if I, if I apply a variable separation, so what I usually do before I separate the variables, I cross multiply, right? So dt equal to negative k multiplied by t minus ts dt. Divide both sides by t minus ts. I'm going to have 1 over t minus ts dt equal to negative k dt. Now let's integrate both sides. Well, remember, this, this, is a, this is a constant and this is a variable. If I integrate 1 over a variable minus a constant, I get lean of just the thing as it was. However, if it was the integral of 1 over 2 minus x, I will have to take negative lean of, then I just write this. Okay. So um, if you chose to model the second version of it, let's say you chose to model this one, what you will have, you will have that um, you will have negative lean of Ts minus T in state. But since we chose to work with this version, which has a constant minus a, a variable minus a constant, then this is how you, you integrate this model. Well, this will be lean of T minus Ts is equal to negative Kt plus the constant of integration. I'm going to exponentiate both sides to get rid of the lean, right? And I'm going to have t minus ts equal to e to the power of c multiplied by e to the power of negative kt. Well, remember that t is a function of, of t, okay? Temperature is a function of time, okay? It feels like we're using t repeatedly. So there's two t's here, the t for temperature and the t for time. So t of t is equal to, what is this e to the power of c? A constant to the power of a constant is another constant, which I can just call capital A. A e to the power of negative kt. I'll check this t. As the other side, it becomes positive ts. Of which it makes more sense to start with the, with the constant. I can say ts plus a e negative kt. Well, let's apply initial conditions and solve for the constant a. So sometimes they, they can ask in the exam, how would we solve for the constant of integration? And the simplest answer is by applying initial conditions, then you get your one minus. Some marks you must not miss them. So let's say, what is the temperature at t equal to zero? It's given by t naught, right? If I say t naught is equal to ts plus ae to the negative zero t, this term here becomes one. Therefore, I'm going to have Ts plus A. Therefore, A is equal to T naught minus Ts. So this is the constant of integration which we get. Right. I'll take this A and I put it in this solution over there. If we do that, we should end up with T at time T is equal to Ts plus A, which is T naught minus Ts multiplied by e to the power of negative kt. It's always a good idea to say where k is a positive number. k is not negative, however, its coefficient is negative to show that there's an inverse relationship between the progression of, progression of time 
and the change in temperature. So this model over here, or this equation here, the results which we call Newton's law of cooling. And in the next lesson, we will do an example on how to apply this cooling model. Thank you for watching.